Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to talk about how to refactor our player controller into a state machine. So this state machine is going to make our code base a lot simpler to use. It's going to simplify our debugging process, and it is going to make it so that our code is just simpler to read. So that is what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to build out our state machine. Now, the goal of a state machine is to make things simple. So that's basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to make our our character controller a lot simpler to use. So first, we need to build out what our state machine looks like. So if we come up here, we can create an enum for that. So we can just type in enum and we can type states. And we're going to have a couple of states. We'll have the walking state. We're going to need the sneaking state. We're going to need the crouching state, the in air state, the standing state, and the jumping state. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Well, hold on a minute. Why in the world do we have a sneaking and a crouching state and a standing and a walking state? And here is the reason. So sneaking is when you're walking but crouched. And crouching is when you're standing, but crouching. And walking is when you're standing, but moving, right? So that's kind of the goal, right? So we can determine exactly where the player is and what they're doing, okay? And then once we have our states, we need to actually build out our current state. So if we scroll down to the bottom here, or to the bottom of our variables here, and we say private states current state is equal to states dot, and let's just set it to a very simple state like standing. That's a good idle state to be in. Now with this whole refactor, what we're going to be trying to do is we need to try to simplify our code as much as humanly possible because one of the big problems that we have and part of the reason why I wanted to move to a state machine was that all of our code is in our process function. And that makes our code extremely hard to use. We have whole segments of code, like for instance, our Git surface here, this whole section here, all of this is code that could just exist out in a function. It does a single use thing and there's no reason to have it in multiple area. So in the spirit of that, let's refactor this guy into its own function. So if you select all of this and right click it, quick actions and refactoring, you'll see we get a thing called extract method here. So if we click on that, you will see that it creates a new method and we can just call it get surface just like that. And you'll see that we have these outs here and another out right here as well. What does an out mean? Well, an out means that this variable gets taken out of the function once it's done. So for instance, physics space state, space state, we bring this guy in, we change some things about our space state and then we return it. But since we don't want to just return it, we can actually just do an out and then it changes that state and returns that value. It's basically creating a pointer to this value here. And same thing with a surface. You can see right here, we have a surface and we're out surface. Now in our case, we don't actually need that. Okay. It has zero benefit for us for it to be out here because we can basically just return data instead. Our space state can just be reinstantiated and that's fine. So I'm going to kill this guy. And instead of saying out surface, I'm going to also get rid of this guy. And I'm going to say surface is equal to get surface. And I'm going to copy this guy or cut him. So control X. And I'm going to scroll down here and you will see that we have that function right here. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paste in this space state. So physics world space state space state is equal to get world direct space state. And I'm going to get rid of this guy here and I'm going to come in here and return a surface. And then I'll come down here and just say return surface, but that's not going to work. And the reason why it's not going to work is because we have a surface, but we don't actually have a surface object. We need to actually create that. So much like we did before, we need to create a surface 
and we need to make that equal to our init surface. And that will allow us to actually have a surface result. So whether we hit an object or not, we have at least some form of a surface that we can use for our code. And now we can minimize this guy and we can scroll up to the top and you will see that our code really hasn't changed any. Everything else, if we were to hit play, all of our code would work just as if we didn't take this logic out and abstract it. Now, you will notice that we do have a bug down here where it's saying, hey, um, our space state's gone. The name space state is gone. And that's totally fine because we're going to completely refactor all this anyway. So it's not a big deal. So now once we have this, now we can basically start building out our state machine. Now, when I go and I refactor code, a lot of times I like to take it segment by segment by segment. Okay. And the first part that we have to build for our state machine is our actual state builder, right? The, the thing that switches our states between different states. And we're not going to use a, a switch statement at all in this code for our player, at least. And the reason why is because we don't really need to switch our stuff. We're just going to be using our state machine as a guaranteed way to determine how our code flows between those couple functions that we're going to build. So first we have to build out what our input states are. And what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll just start building it out. So private vector three, get input. And the reason why I'm returning a vector three is because a vector three is what we need to do our movement code. We have to get back our input direction and our actual direction that we're moving. If we don't return that data, it's not going to be able to work with our movement code. So that's kind of the reason. Now, if we click on physics process and we come down here to where our input code is, we have this small section here. So let's copy this guy right here and let's come down here and paste it right here. So great. Now we can just return our direction, right? Which is cool. And that basically does our input, but we need to handle a lot of stuff here. Okay. If you remember, all of this function is designed to just handle every one of our inputs. So anywhere we're saying, Hey, if input action just pressed, then we're going to pull that out into this function. So we'll cut this guy, come down here and paste it. So if input action is pressed flashlight, then do our flashlight stuff. Now we could actually pull this guy out as well. If we just select this guy, right click, quick actions, refactoring, extract method, and just say handle flashlight like that. And there we go. Now it's out into its own function and it's really simple. And then we could basically just get rid of these guys. And we have a very nice, clean code base. And that's what we're looking for. Now, the rest of this, I'm going to mostly code myself. And the reason why is because a lot of this is stuff that um, I could pull out from here, right? I could pull out this if input get crouched and grab all of this. But there's a lot of code in here like this stuff here that I don't want to have in my input section. I just don't think it's needed. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hand code all of this. So first we'll check if our direction does not equal vector 3.0. And if it doesn't, and if our input dot is action pressed crouch, I believe we had a capital C, then our current state is equal to states dot sneaking else our current state is equal to states dot walking. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm saying if we are moving, right, if our direction is, does not equal zero, then we must be moving. If we're crouched, if we're pressing the crouch button, then our state is sneaking. We are moving and we are crouched. And else we are moving, but we are not crouched. Else, this means that we're not moving. So we can basically just copy this bit of code here and paste it and then just say states dot crouching and states dot standing. And if we want to write shorthand, we can, we could just do this. And then suddenly all of our code is in shorthand, which is really cool. 
Now, I don't really like shorthand too much, but I know a lot of people do, so I'll leave this in, and if I hate it too much, I'll, I'll switch it out. But that's what I'm saying by how you can make these things really simple and really nice. And now we basically have all of our movement code, right? Except for jumping. All we need to do is handle jumping. So if we come in here, we can just say if input dot is action just pressed. And if I remember correctly, we had something like UI down, if I remember correctly. So if we scroll up here, UI accept. And I really don't like UI accept because it doesn't make sense. To me, UI accept means something like enter. In Godot, it means spacebar, but in my mind, it means enter. So instead, since this is jumping code, let's come out to Godot here and let's go up to our project settings and let's go to input map and let's just add that in. So jump, add, hit the plus icon, filter by event, hit the space bar and hit okay. And then hit close. And then we can just say jump. But we don't just want to check our jump because if we allow the character to just jump whenever they want, then they could be in error and you could hit the space bar and then your character would jump again. And then you could hit jump again and jump again. And then your character could basically fly. So we don't want that. So we can just say, and is on floor. And there we go. Now we can just say current state is equal to states dot jumping. And I hit the wrong button. There we go. Else, if we are not is on floor, then we must be in the air. And then we have to return our direction. And that's basically everything, right? So what we're doing is we are building out our state, our state switcher. We're literally switching states based off of what we're doing. So if you really wanted to, when you expand this, for instance, something I was talking to some of my friends about was it'd be really cool to have a match mechanic, right? So you, your character strikes a match and then uses a match. And in that way, there is a sense of progression as time goes on with your player. So instead of your character having a light or a lantern, which originally I designed this to have a lantern, but we could add in a match instead so that the character has to light a match and then they can use the, the match, which has a temporary light value that it can um, use to light the area. And you could also set it up such your, your character has a lantern and when they light the lantern, it also uses up a match. Now, something that I was thinking about is if we needed to expand this, we could come in here and say, if flashlight, um, if action just press flashlight, handle flashlight. And then we could also have a, if action just pressed match, then handle match. And you could have it so that it basically just does this, but then our code is segmented, if that makes sense. And that's kind of the power of the system. Now, once we have this, let's handle our movement code. So next, always when I refactor stuff is I like to start abstracting out my movement code. Now there's a lot that goes on in here. And if we scroll up, you'll see that there is a boatload that goes on in here. So we're going to try to abstract what we can, and then we'll probably have to do a lot of coding to clean it up. So first let's create our function. So private void handle movement, and we're gonna pass in a vector three direction and a double, which is our Delta. And then we need to actually create our velocity. So let's scroll up to the top and let's grab our velocity right here. Let's copy that guy and let's come down here and paste it. And then we need to get our speed. And we actually have a section here where we do our speed. It's right. I believe it's right here. We're actually pulling it right here. So we'll just copy this guy. We'll come down here and paste it. And then we need to actually do our crouch stuff. Now we do have a section in here where we're saying if is crouched, crouch speed, right? So we can copy that guy and, and bring it down here and, and great. But we actually have a state machine. So we can just say if our current state 
is equal to states dot sneaking, then we could go and change our speed because we don't need to worry about if they're crouching because they're not going to be moving. So it doesn't matter, which is great. And we need to pull our jumping state. So if we scroll up here, we can take a look at wherever we're doing our jumping code. So let's take a look. Where's our jumping code? I probably already passed it. You guys are probably yelling at me. Here it is. So we have a section here where we're saying, hey, if is action press UI accept velocity Y is equal to jump velocity. And we have all of this additional logic here, right? Is on floor and if action is pressed. But we don't have to worry about that because we did all of this in our state machine, right? In our input section, we checked if the character is on the floor and we checked if the button is pressed. So we don't need to worry about any of that. So we could just bring this down here like this and just say, if current state is jumping, then we know that we can jump. And then even cooler, we can just pull our movement code. So let's scroll up to the top or up to, I think right here, we could just grab this segment of the code because we don't need the rest of this. All this is like the noise and all the animations and stuff. We don't have to worry about that. We can just grab this bit of code, paste it, and then we can come up here, grab this bit of code, copy it, and come down here and paste it. And that's pretty much it. And that's all we really need to do. I'm gonna have to close that, there we go. And that's, that's pretty much it. And now all we have to do is do our gravity because part of our movement is gravity, right? We need, to, part of our character's movement actually is gravity. So we do need to set that. And I think we set that, uh, right here where we add our gravity. So let's just copy this guy. Let's come down here and paste it in. And then we'll just set our velocity equal to velocity and then just run our move and slide. And bam, there we go. Simple enough. And all of our movement code, all of this mess up here has been simplified down to just this, which is great. So now once we have our movement code settled, we can basically just handle our sound, right? Like I said, we're, we're taking a methodical approach to refactoring our code. We did our input, we handled our movement. Now we have to handle our sound. So we'll just come in here and private void handle sound. And we need to pass in a surface. If you remember a lot of our sound stuff up here, is doing stuff like noise value, which has surface dot surface resources dot noise value, or playing a anim or playing a sound, if I remember correctly, like jump in noise and jump in land and things like that. So we'll need to pass in our surface. So we'll just type surface surface like that, and then we can just code this out. So much like before, we did our noise value, and we set that equal to zero, if I remember correctly. And then we just have our basic states. So if our character is walking, right, then they're going to play their walk sound. So just if current state is equal to states dot walking. And if you remember, if I remember correctly, we were checking if our foot audio player is playing. So we'll grab this guy. So, and this is not playing then we can just set all of our stuff and then we can just set our noise value. So noise value is equal to surface dot surface resource dot noise value or noise level in this case. And then we can play our sound, but we can't just play our sound because we need to check if our foot audio is playing. If you remember up here, we actually checked for that here. Remember? So we need to check for that down here as well. So if we're not playing, then we can just say foot audio player dot stream is equal to surface dot surface resource dot. And since this is walking, we can just say walk stream wave. And then we can basically just say foot audio player dot play and we're good to go. And now we can just grab the state here, copy it, enter, paste, and then we can just say dot sneaking. Then we can play our noise level. And if I remember correctly, it was divided by three. 
and we can play our sneak stream wave and that's it. Now we could abstract these two guys to be one function and then just say, go play the thing. And that's up to you guys. It's dealer's choice if you guys want to do it. Um, it technically is correct if you want to do that, but I'm okay with this because I don't feel like it's necessary, but it's up to you guys if you guys want to do that. Now, the next sound that we have to play is our land sound, right? When the character actually lands on the ground. So we can just check if we are in the air, right? So current state is equal to state dot in air. And if you remember correctly, we have our was in air last frame. If you remember, we had that as a, as a thing. And then we can just set our noise value just like we were doing earlier. So noise value is equal to surface dot surface resource dot noise level. And actually, I think it wasn't called noise value or noise level. It was called jump land noise level like that. And then we can just set our sound. So jump audio player dot stream is equal to surface dot surface resource dot jump land stream wave. And then we could just play it jump audio stream dot play. And there we go. Now we have pretty much everything done except for one thing. You'll see we have our walking. You'll see we have our sneaking. You'll see we have our jumping and I uh, will technically it's just our landing. We don't have a jump sound yet, so we don't have that in here. But we are missing when we're standing and when we're crouching, right? When we're standing and we're crouching, all of our sound is supposed to go away. So we can just come in here and go if current state is is equal to states dot standing or current state is equal to states dot crouching than if our foot audio player dot playing than foot audio player dot stop. And there we go. And I'm going to put it uh, enter in here so that these are nice and spaced out. So that way it just feels good. And that's pretty much all we have to do for our noise. And if we minimize that guy and we hit enter, enter. Our next big one that we need to break out is our animation. So we have our surface, we have our flashlight, our input, our movement, our sound, and now we just have animation left. So we could just say private, private void handle animation. Now we have all sorts of stuff that we do up here for our animation. If you remember, we have like get animation player, play on crouch, play crouched. We have stuff, we just have stuff littered everywhere. So what we'll do is we'll grab our Raycast code. If you remember, we have it right here. We'll just grab all of this, we'll copy it. We'll come down here and we'll basically paste it. Now, if input action is pressed crouched. Instead, we'll just say if current state is equal to states dot sneaking or current state is equal to states dot crouching, then do this. And we'll keep our is crouched. We're going to need this anyway for our uncrouching state to handle some of our animation stuff. So we're going to need to keep that. But what we can do is we can pull this guy out. So that way it is a little bit more efficient on our code. So what we'll do is we'll just control X this guy out. We'll scroll up to the top and we'll just say private animation player. Player animation player and then we'll just come in here and say player animation player is equal to get node animation player and then we can just grab this reference we can scroll down here and we can just paste this guy in and then we could basically just come in here and change this guy to player animation player dot play uncrouched now this is a problem 
and I'll tell you why. So previously I was going to do it so that the uncrouch animation was different than the crouch animation. But now that I've, I've had some thought, I don't think it's really worth separating the two. Originally, I thought it would be a good idea because it would allow us to have some flexibility, but I think that it'd probably just be easier just to do a dot play backwards and just pass in our crouch animation. And it's going to simplify our animation playing quite a bit and make things a lot easier for us. Now, we also need our physics space state, so we could just create that. So physics direct space state, space state is equal to get world 3D dot direct space state. And there we go. I'm also going to reformat this a little bit. So we're going to pull in our new physics query parameter 3D. I'm going to put hit it enter on my from, hit it enter on my to, hit enter on my exclude, and then I will hit enter like that. And that'll just give us just a lot better and easier to read code because before it was really difficult to read. Now it's going to be so much simpler for us. Now, in general, this would be great, but this will introduce a bug. So if we uncrouch and we let off of our control button, down here in our input, we have a section where we are saying if action pressed crouch, else current state is standing. Now we could do one of two things and it's totally dealer's choice. So you guys can do whichever one you prefer. You can either do the ray cast down here, which I'm not a huge fan of because as soon as you let off that control, that means all of this is going to be running constantly, which means you're going to have a ray cast every single frame. And that to me is going to be really slow. But if you do the ray cast, you could check for the ray cast and see, hey, is there anything above me? If, if so, then stay in current state is crouching, um, else current state is standing, right? Or you can just come up here and instead just say, hey, if result count is whatever, then play backwards crouch if crouched or crouch is equal to false, else we know that there's something above us. So current state is equal to states dot sneaking. Unfortunately, I think this will be the one exception to the rule of everything in our state machine should be here. I think this will be the one exception. And that's just because I don't want to deal with all of the mess that we're going to have to deal with if we don't do it this way, especially with the performance impact that we'll have to deal with. Now, once we have this, our entire state machine is done. Now, if you let that sink in for a second, how much simpler is this code? It's a lot. And we did it in about 30 minutes or so. Now we do need to call a lot of our code. So I guess we can't quite declare victory just yet, but it's gonna be really simple because we can just come up here, select all of this code like this, and then just get rid of it. And then all we have to do is just do a few checks. First, we need to do our was in air. And our was in air is not our is on floor, right? Because we had that before in our code. It's just not anywhere in any of this code. And we could put it in somewhere like in handle movement or maybe in animation or something like that. But we'll just put it here because it's just going to be easier. And then we just have to call our input. So vector three velocity is equal to get input. And then we need to get our light value. So light, light value is equal to light detect object dot light level. And then we need to handle our sound, right? And then we need to handle our animation. And then we need to handle our movement. And we need to pass in our velocity, comma, our delta. We do have an error here. It takes in a surface. So we need to pass in our surface. Now we could come in here and go, okay, well, you know, surface, surface is equal to get surface, right? And then pass this in. Or since this is not used anywhere else, we can just get rid of this guy, grab this function, throw it in here, 
And then that completely gets rid of the need for that line. And then that's it. That's our entire refactor. Everything has been abstracted right here. And it's going to make everything so much easier to debug. So if we come in here and I turn on my sound, we can go ahead and test all of this. So let me come in here, stop my background music, because I like to play background music when I'm recording. And I turn on my desktop audio. If we save this and we go back to Godot and we hit play, we have our sound. He's hunting us, which is good. Our light detect is working. Our light stuff is actually operating. And he can definitely hear us. I do think that there's a slight problem with our enemy AI, but we can move around and our sound effects work. We can jump, we can crouch. Yeah, I think everything's working. Awesome. So that's basically how we refactor our character controller. Now that we are completed with our state machine changes in our refactoring, now we just have the last thing on our list, which is the always the last thing on our list, which is we need to comment out all of our code and make sure that everything is well formatted and set up for success. So we'll come down here and I will speed this up and I will comment all the code and then I can give you guys an idea of what's next and then we'll go from there. So I will be right back. Okay, so now that we have all of our stuff commented and we've switched our player out to our state machine, now at this point, our next step is to build out a basic level. So what we're gonna do is what's called gray boxing. And gray boxing is when you start boxing out what you think your level is going to look like. And of course, this is not going to be the final state of the game or of the player controller or of anything like that. We do have a lot of things that we can change. We can add, you know, I, I like I said, I really would love to have that match striking mechanic. I think that would be really cool. But at least in this specific segment of the tutorials, I think we are in a good spot to stop. Uh, doing code and we can start focusing on building out like a, a small level area and talking about like events and puzzles and stuff like that. So if you guys have any puzzle ideas, please drop them in the comments below and I'd be more than happy to take a look at them. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.